Hey everyone, Jeffro here with just a quick uh, video update. A vlog, which I've never been a fan of that term, vlog or vlog, but here we are. A video, personal journal. So anyway, a um, couple things. Uh, went to see the pre-op doctor for my surgery coming up on the 25th. Um, if you're not aware, I'm dealing with some compressed discs that's pinching a nerve and it's basically affecting everything up my arm. My whole arm goes numb, shoulder hurts, it's it's horrible. I've been fighting with that for a couple of years now, honestly, but finally I have a surgery date. They're gonna go in and replace the disc with uh, some metal thing, I'm not sure. Um, I took Kristen with me so she could get all the details too because I don't trust my memory and she's better at that stuff than I am. So. They're gonna cut me open. He said right here, actually. And then they go around through a, he said a natural cavity. And I guess they'll they'll do their fusion or replacing the, the pad with something artificial, if I remember correctly. But basically there's no padding anymore. It's, it's the bone is kind of, uh, the vertebrae is compressed on another vertebrae and they're gonna go in and fix that, so. That'll be next month. That'll be the 25th. I'll have uh, I'll be off about a month from work for recovery. Um, should be interesting. I'm looking forward to not being in pain constantly. Not exactly looking forward to getting cut open, but it happens. And I've been through worse, so I'm not too worried about it. Kristen and I went to lunch the other day before the the appointment, and we got some Sam's Deli. Sam's Italian Deli is a staple here in Fresno. Um, it's a full Italian um, deli counter, fresh sandwiches, you know, pasta, stuffed peppers, pre-made meatballs, you know, all sorts of stuff. Uh, what you'd find in a typical Italian deli. Um, again, Fresno staple, they're really good. But uh, we went there, uh, Kristen got some, some kind of pasta salad and some other veggie stuff. We're trying to eat better. Um, I got the Sam's uh, focaccia sandwich, which is always amazing. I'm a sucker for a good uh, focaccia bread, but we ate there. We like to do that every once in a while because it's, it's really good. The food there is really good. Good sandwiches. They've got a, a bit of a market too. Um, so like they've got chips and some um, uh, desserts, pastries, a lot of wine. Uh, a lot of sodas, um, have a pretty big uh, drink section. So yeah, if you're ever in Fresno, they are on First and Clinton and they're really good. Can't recommend them enough. We went camping last weekend. That was a lot of fun. I haven't been camping in forever. It had been 20, 25 years since I've been camping. Um, we had a good time. Um, it was a little different. We were. We weren't in a specific camping uh, ground, so there were no facilities. Um, most of the campgrounds here, in that area anyway, he said were still closed, not because of the fires, and we saw a lot of fire damage while we were there and on the road up. But um, a beetle problem, apparently. Uh, these beetles have been invading the trees and they don't want to risk, you know, trees and debris falling on people so campgrounds are closed so that meant the spot that we had um we had to make our own bathroom so that was fun that's a uh, true camping right there um we stayed one night we were gonna stay two but our sleeping situation was a little iffy we brought the wrong inflatable mattress we thought it was a, a larger mattress it was twin sized so it wasn't gonna fit us um, one of the campers had an extra um, mattress that we used, but it still, it wasn't all that great. And I ended up really kind of messing up my shoulder. So we were gonna stay two nights. We only stayed the one. Um, I got a lot of great video though. Um, the, that particular spot in the state was wide open for drone flight. There were no drone restrictions. So I was able to, to get my drone up in the air and. Get some really impressive shots of the forest and the, the surrounding area. Um, I'll have a larger video on that at some point because I am still learning Final Cut and making videos is kind of slow going still. 
Um, I'm easily distracted, that's a problem. And there's a lot of stuff going around here that I get distracted by. And I know there are some things I'm doing in the program that can be done easier, but I just don't have the knowledge to do that yet. So, so editing's been kind of slow in that respect. So there will be eventually a longer video of our, our trip, which by the way was Sierra National Forest here in California. It was beautiful. Um, but that video should be coming at some point. I just got done editing our uh, trip to Morro Bay that we took uh, a few weekends ago. Um, that was Maybe's first trip, which if you've watched the video, I mentioned several times and she was great. She, we, we want to travel with her, but she's kind of spastic when we get her in the car here around just, you know, to take her to the vet or to the park or whatever. And I was curious how she would react to a longer car trip. I was hoping she would eventually just kind of get sleepy and lay down. It didn't happen. She, she wanted to look out the window constantly, see where we're going and kind of back and forth in the back seat. I have her, um, you know, latched into the, the seat belt, but still she has some room to walk around, but she, she didn't want any part of laying down in the car. Now on the way home, after she had been walking all day and we went to the beach, which was a fun experience. She got to see the ocean and hit let the waves hit her feet once. Um, she wasn't a big fan. But on the way home, she did get tired enough that she actually laid down for a minute or two, but it didn't last and um, she was still up and around and looking out the windows. But when we got home, if you did watch the video, you saw that literally within five minutes of us getting home, she walked straight into our bedroom, got into her bed and she was she was done for the night so she had a really good time but she was tired when we got home but the trip showed us that we could take her with us to places obviously dog friendly places um but she's not gonna be a problem i was i was worried about her being you know spastic walking around town with other people on the sidewalk she was fine she stayed you know stuck right with us there was one particular shop I don't remember now even what they sold, but we passed it like three times because Morro Bay is not very big. Um, every time we passed this shop, maybe would just beeline right into the shop. There was something in there that she wanted to check out. So we had to kind of tug her, oh, come on, you can't go in there. Um, a couple dog friendly places there. Uh, a lot of those beach towns are very dog friendly. We, we had lunch at one place that had a, a patio that she was able to just hang out with us. and. We had uh, drinks and a pretzel at another place. And again, there was an outdoor patio, very pet friendly. Um, but I also did find uh, an app called Bring Fido that you can get for your iOS or Android. And you can search you know, areas for their dog friendliness. So basically um, do a search for say Fresno. And um, you've got the choice between like hotels, restaurants, venues, events, things like that. And anything dog friendly, it'll come up in the search and you'll be able to see it and take your dog. Um, like I said, a lot of the beach towns in California, they're, they're very dog friendly. Uh, Morro Bay, um, especially Monterey. Monterey is very dog friendly. You see a lot of dogs around there and it's great. We love dogs. We like being surrounded by animals and we love it. Maybe got to meet a lot of dog friends on her trip and made some human friends too. People wanted to come up to her. This little girl walked up and her mom said, Could, she wants to hug your dog. I said, she can absolutely hug my dog. So it was fun. So that was a successful trip. We like getting out of town every once in a while just cause you know, I've got a stressful job. Kristen's right now trying to find a job and that's stressful. So we, we try to get out and do things like that whenever we can which is one of the reasons we have a Disneyland season pass. Um, right now is not the good time to go to Disneyland. It's just way too hot. So we're gonna, we're gonna let the heat die down a little bit before we go back to, to the, any theme parks. Um, Cause we haven't been to Universal Florida, not Florida, Universal Hollywood in a few months either. We've got passes there as well. I did get the last shipment of, uh, the last shipment from CGC, my uh, graded and signed comic books came in. Uh, I finally have all of those back. There were five total, uh, two for the Chris Claremont signing and three for the James Tinian and uh, his, his group of signings. What they did there was James Tinian was a writer for I think three books right now currently. 
and then they had the artists for each of those books along with them on the signing. So on two of the issues, for example, I got the writer and the artist to both sign. On one of them, I just got the writer, James, and uh, on the Chris Claremont ones, just the writer, Chris Claremont. So those are all back. I'm a little bummed because now I don't have anything I'm expecting to come back from CGC, but I'm gonna send in some more uh, for regular grading, uh, hopefully sometime this year. And then there's a the, they're always announcing new private signings. And just a few days ago, they announced Scotty Young will be doing a private signing. And even if you don't know the name Scotty Young and you're into comics, you've probably seen some of his uh, colorful baby covers. Um, and I'll post a few of them here while we're talking, but um, he's a writer also and a very talented artist. Um, I love him. He's He seems like a great guy, seems like a great dad. I love his art. Um, I've got a lot of his Marvel covers that he's done, so I need to look around and find the best couple to pull out and send for him to sign. Um, I'm hoping, there's a couple names I keep hoping they'll add to the private signings, but we'll have to see um, what they announce. And it's not cheap, so, um, you know, you gotta consider that too. There's lots of stuff I would love to send in and have graded, but you know, private signings, those single issues run about $85, which gets you the signature and the, the you know, the, the what they call the encapsulation, where they take the comic act comic and actually put it in the plastic what they call what people call slabs they slap the comic uh, um so those usually about 85 dollars for that type of signing um in the in the uh regards of the other ones where two people signed it they'll usually give you a deal so it wouldn't be like 85 times two i think that one ran me like i want to say 100 so it's not bad if there's multiple people signing you can usually get a little bit better deal. And sometimes the artists that they have in for the private signings will offer what they call remarks, which is it's a really quick sketch, you know, under their signature. And that's usually a little bit more and not really something I go for because it's, it's more expensive. And, you know, really what I'm after is the signed and certified graded book, not so much original art. If I was looking for original art, there's other ways to do that. Coming up, like I said, I've got my surgery at the end of the month. I'll have a month off of work for that, so I'm gonna have plenty of time to do some editing. Yeah, everyone else is doing great. Uh, Dad's same as always. He uh, actually, he just bought himself a set of golf clubs that he found at a thrift store. I think he's finally, you know, mom's death obviously hit everyone really hard, but dad, he fell apart for a while. That mom was his, his life and when she, when she passed, he just, he disappeared for a while. Fought with depression, which, you know, I was hopefully able to give him some comfort because that's something I have some experience with. He was getting on himself for not recovering fast enough, I guess. And I kept telling him, you know, don't put a time frame on your recovery. You know, that's, we lost someone very special to us and it, it hurts and it's gonna hurt for a long time. And it still does but he's finally starting to come out of it a little bit to the point where he, he he wants to go out and do stuff now. In fact, he was getting to that point before COVID, but once COVID hit, everyone had to stay in and that kind of set him back. But now he's kind of looking, you know, to go take little day trips. He went to the thrift store and found himself some golf clubs. So he's gonna, you know, make himself a little pitching wet or pitching green out there in the backyard, he said. and. He's looking up, you know, um, driving ranges here around town. So that's great. He's he's finally starting to to get out a little bit, which makes me happy because, I you know I hate seeing him like that. And you know he was he wanted to do things and travel when mom was here. And I think he's finally getting back to the point where he's you know comfortable to do things like that. So that's good. I'm I'm happy about that. Um, Anthony. He's the same as always. I don't see him too much. He works pretty, he works a lot. Um, but he's he's pretty much the same. We'll be seeing Thor tomorrow. Cannot wait for that. Um, every Marvel movie makes me happy. So I'll be, I'll be ready to go tomorrow. We're gonna, we're actually gonna try out the Edwards Theater VIP uh, ticket, 
which is its own little, it's its own separate theater. All the seats are the real big, you know, comfortable recliners. Um, the VIP gets you free popcorn, free soda, or free icy. And, and they've got their own full uh, VIP bar back there that they can uh, make drinks. So it's, yeah, the tickets are $25, it's a little bit more expensive. But like I said, it does include free popcorn, free soda, and all the seats are, you know, assigned and the big comfortable uh, recliners. I'll probably post a quick video of that when we when we go. But um, looking forward to it. This new Thor movie should be really cool. Um, I love the 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 story that it's based on. Now, obviously, Marvel never really fully adapts a comic book story. They kind of use it as just a, I like to say, a framework or a jumping off point. So the the Jason Aaron Thor run is going to look very different from the movie Thor Love and Thunder. But that is where the movie takes its inspiration from. So it's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. Um, awesome to have Natalie Portman back in the family. Um, she very famously was over being in a Marvel movie. Um, she didn't feel like she was given enough to do. She felt like just a background character, and she was. I mean, all she really was was Thor's girlfriend, and she's a uh, you know a talented, successful actor, and it it had nothing for her. I and I, I can't blame her. So getting her back into the franchise is pretty cool, and. The way they did that was, you know, Jason Aaron did have this wonderful, you know, uh, run of Jane Foster as Thor, and it it just worked out. It, it it was it was the story I think Natalie wanted because it, it gave her something to do. She's you know she's no longer the superhero's girlfriend. She's the superhero's equal, and in some ways better, according to the story. Um, if you haven't read it. The Jason Aaron run by Thor is very, very good. It includes the God uh, Butcher Gore, the God Butcher storyline, uh, the uh, the Dark Elves attack on the Nine Realms. That won't be in the movie. And uh, Thor becoming unworthy, and Jane Foster taking over in his place. So, very much looking forward to that. Should be cool. So I'll have a video on that once we get done. But I guess I'll wrap it up now. No, nothing really else to talk about. Um, but yeah, thanks for sitting through me rambling. Thanks for the other views on the videos. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get some content out and get this editing thing down. And I do appreciate people coming and checking out the videos. And um, I do want to learn how to do this better. So um, if you're watching this and you have some editing experience and you're seeing something I'm doing wrong, Please tell me, I don't have an ego about this stuff. I wanna do better. So again, thanks for watching. Appreciate you tuning in. Leave a like and subscribe if you don't mind. It helps out. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next time.